Welcome everybody to our May membership workshop. I'm Cindy DeFilippo, Daniel Webster Council's Family Engagement Coordinator. And this month we are talking about spring recruitment and how to manage your bscout.org leads and um, really how to update your bscout.org pins and really how to na navigate my dot scouting. So we have a lot that we're gonna be looking at today and I'm excited to see everybody here, thank you. So I'm going to call up my trusty slides, which always um, gives me a little challenge here. There we go, should I put my glasses on? I have too many things open. All right, here we go. And can everyone see the PowerPoint? It's loading. Ah, uh, good. I was going to say, uh oh. <laughs> How many times have we heard that, right? Okay, it is a little slow, and I did close out a lot of my things. All right, should be working here. Okay, it doesn't want to do the actual slideshow, I don't think so. So we're gonna be talking about spring scouting and I know a lot of us volunteers out there are cringing at the thought of welcoming new youth into their units right now in spring. It's May, almost May, I keep saying it's May, it's April. I just said May at the beginning. We are in April, the end of April, but potentially welcoming those youth early May, which a lot of us look at it as the end of the school year, the end of the scouting year, we're kind of wrapping things up. Why are we inviting more youth? Don't worry. Spring recruiting really works well because the weather is getting better and your group most likely has a packed calendar for spring between campouts and outdoor events, hikes, all that fun stuff. And the good news is, is that families, especially now, I don't want to say post pandemic, but probably nearing post pandemic phase, families are just dying to get outside. They want to do more activities together and they want their kids to get away from those electronics. And folks are looking for those activities on weekends or even during the week, and especially during summer break. Some possible barriers, I know everyone's going to shake their head to this one, is earning their rank by the end of the year or before summer. And I'm here to tell you, along with all our other team members and what we hear from National all the time as well, is that they don't have to. Rank is not the most important thing in scouting and they don't have to earn their rank in one month. They can earn their Bobcat. And then when you start working on advancements with your youth in the fall, they just join that group, that den, that patrol in their age group and they start on that next rank. They don't have to earn their rank when they join you in the spring. So how awesome is that? Bring those kids in, right? Um, so, um, and then the schools and scouts, as we talked about, they usually do slow down, but this is a great opportunity for scouting to offer some specific programs to families who maybe the spring season is also shutting down uh, for sports and they're looking for something more for their kids to do. So you can plan a summer fun activity schedule that maybe you have a movie night one night at Chunky's or at a different cinema. Maybe you do a cookout on your chart organization's um, you know, property outside or do a s'mores night. Um, these are all just normal fun activities where you're just gathering everybody. So that way the scouts and the families can really bond. And spring is a great time to do that um, leading into summer because then your new families will get to know the other kids and other families, become friends, hopefully, most likely. And then that way in the fall, they're really ready to dive in. And on top of it, their kids are going to school and saying, hey, I joined Scouts in the spring over the summer. You got to come with me. And it gives them the opportunity in the fall to already brag about it. They're already ahead of the game. Some spring recruiting ideas, and I just have a short list here, but just to get the wheels turning, 
you know, we just, a lot of us had Pinewood Derbies and I say this probably in every meeting like a broken record, but the Derby is just my favorite thing. And I know this is for Cub Scouts, but honestly guys, the older Scouts also love the Pinewood Derby. And I always feel bad that the older Scouts, you know, they may not get to do it, especially some of the Scouts who are girls, you know, that have joined late in the game, they probably never get to do a Pinewood Derby. So host an outlaw Pinewood Derby and maybe you buddy up with a partnering pack and you have these crazy cars or, or a Lego Derby or something super fun and host that outlaw Derby. So you don't have to worry about rules or anything. And as they invite friends, have some materials on hand for those friends to build cars or create cars to race, to race as well. You can do a recycled Rangata Regatta. That's another event that I think a lot of our young kids do, but our older kids would still love that and, they're not, and they don't usually do it. Um, they can, um, you can offer juice boxes and, um, you know, individual bags of chips and then kids can create their recycled regatta, uh, boats out of those materials. So then you're kind of teaching them about, uh, reuse and recycling as well. And then they can get creative about making their own boats. Ch really? Chuck Wagon. Oh, go ahead, Josh. So, so, so new, one of the things with the regatta, especially at the troop level. You got all those brand new AOLs that just joined. Those AOLs are still kids in their mind. They haven't matured into that troop level yet. It's a great way just to have that fun. Um, if your pack might have regattas, borrow them. Um, they're pretty fairly cheap. You can get some uh, older versions. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's a great way to retain those scouts over the summer, some of these things, um, especially those AOLs. Those AOLs are in that first year transition. It takes a while for that. And the longer you can hold those scouts, you're going to grow your unit at a troop level. So the regard is a great way to just have fun at a troop level for those young ages. That's so true, Josh. And I'm so glad you chimed in because we automatically think of those kids, right, as being like older kids and maybe they're too cool for all this fun stuff. But um, I know whenever we cross over before the derby from the pack to the troop, those kids that were crossing over were like, we're, we're still gonna do the Derby, right? We can still do the Derby. They were, you know, so into it and really disappointed in the years that maybe we considered not, you know, uh, having them do the Derby. And it really is just a chance to have fun. And how often can kids really get creative and do something fun outside and really act like kids? I mean, these are kids for the most part, you're talking about uh, possibly 10 year olds, 11 year olds, 12, 13, I mean, those are still young kids. And you're right, the Rangata Regatta, um, I think you can even buy them on Amazon for really cheap. I think, I think- $6 in the Scout store, $26 for one of those inflatable ones at the Scout store, they do have them. Oh, that's that's uh, really cheap, yeah. Same, same price at the Scout shop online. If again, it's $50 or more, it's free shipping, um, those type of items. But again, they're reasonably cheap and very easy to set up. Yeah, but and it's, easy to store too, right? Fun for the older scouts too. The, the older scouts are kids too. They, if you take all the fun out of it for even the older ones, you might lose them to the sports. So bring, keep the fun going. Exactly. We've got to keep the fun. That's right. Keep it simple, make it fun. I like to say that. And welcome, Aaron. I just saw Aaron come in. Thanks for joining us. We're talking about some spring recruiting ideas and talking about how a lot of this stuff seems like it's for the Cubs and the younger kids, but that it's also fun for the older kids too. There's no rules with having the older kids enjoy some of this fun stuff. Um, I saw a few chuck wagons um, on Facebook with some of our units um, lately too. You know, that goes for the same with Klondike Derbies. Those are super fun to bring, for scouts to bring a friend to experience that. Um, spring campouts, And I love um, the s'mores, scout spirit and skits. You know, have a night where you're doing s'mores, super inexpensive, really easy to do around a little campfire and have your scouts, um, you know, uh, practice skits and songs and then teach them to the other kids, the friends that are joining that night and, you know, maybe go around and have each kid participate as well. Maybe, you know, ghost stories too are always fun. Um, create a hiking club or a sports club. You know, scouts are really solution seekers and they, you know, are part of the community where they're able to offer community, our communities out there some real resources when it comes to community service, um, even, um, you know, 
you know, helping out around the community when it comes to even uh, any type of volunteering or cleanup or even first aid sometimes, um, you know, babysitting, reading books to younger kids, all of that. So why not offer clubs for kids out there in the summer that maybe can't afford day camp or, or, or any type of camp? So um, of course, their parents would have to come with them as well, but it keeps them busy. So maybe you do a hiking club or once a week, you plan different hikes in your area and you invite those kids out with you, you know, and you have, have your scouts invite some new non-scouting friends. Plan out what hikes you're going to do or what weeks you might do a sports club or board game nights and get those fires made up and distribute them in the schools before the end of June. So that way you can label it as a summer, you know, summer fun activity sheet, summer fun time, however you want to label it. And, you know, say, you know, um, Troop 19 is hosting a hiking club and this date, this date, this date, this date, and where you're hiking. And those folks join you with their adults. And then you can have on hand you know, some information, a flyer to your Be A Scout pin, for example, or to your website or your Facebook page for them to seek you out and join you for the next event. Um, as I mentioned, you know, maybe you do an outdoor sports club. One week you do Gaga Ball. One day you may do um, even a scavenger hunt. Another week you might want to have a soccer game uh, with adults versus kids. Yeah, uh, say uh, if you want to go towards sports and hiking, especially sports, a lot of kids love running around. One of the mm -hmm. top, um, scouting things I did as a youth, and I still love it when I get to join in, um, summer camp does it, is the ultimate frisbee. That mm -hmm. to me was uh, <laughs> at a troop level, that was the ultimate sporting game going against other units and stuff out in a giant field. You know, if you want to do kind of a sport and you don't want to get all the equipment, just get a frisbee in a field. Um, Hiking clubs, just as easy. A lot of local places have, you know, trails. Um, Nashua, we ended up just doing one on uh, Easter. It was, uh, they have a litter crew. They're going up Mines Falls in uh, Greeley Park area. And that's a lot of those areas, uh, they, a lot of towns and cities have litter crews. And it's easy enough to join in on them where you class A or class B. And they advertise like crazy. So it's almost free advertising for you too, to join. That's true. That's a great point. I love that idea. So it also shows that you're part of the community, which if you're showing that you're part of that community, people are seeing that and say, hey, let's join in on that. And you're not paying for the advertising. They are. That's true. That's even better, right? <laughs> and you're getting service hours. A lot of troops and units need service hours for yearly things. So you're hitting one, uh, three things with one stone. That's very true. And that's so important when it comes to really publicizing what you're doing, like you're saying, Josh, and in addition doing, you know, the service projects that, that we all do, um, that we all like to do as a unit, as scouts, as families. Um, I know um, right now, um, a few of our team members have been taking part in the Manchester um, Compass group. And, you know, we've created this relationship and then now we're part um, of their community and they advertise us as, you know, a program that, um, you know, schools and the public, um, you know, as like an outreach type program and it's free advertising for Dana Webster Council, you know, throughout New Hampshire. So it's very important, you know, to create those partnerships. And um, and I saw that Aaron, you kid yourself out. I thought someone, I said, oh, someone left. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, so yeah, it's very important to create those partnerships within your community because you never know what, where that's going to lead like you said free advertising you know they're going to start calling on you as a resource as an outlet um so it's it's really important to get the feelers out there and make some connections as well board game nights are just well during the fall season two when school starts up and the advertising and you don't want to do something huge do a, a pack meeting night that's just board game night every scout in your unit brings a a board game or two advertise with your charter rep um like it for us we have saint christopher's we have a church and a school advertising those bulletins with the ptos you know it's a simple board game night can be great for the fall as well as the spring 
Yeah, and isn't it great to like have activities that you don't have to rack your brain to really plan? <laughs> I mean, we're all so busy. And I think all of us, and I include myself, because you think there and you think like something has to be super difficult or that this should be harder to plan, or maybe I'm not, maybe I'm just not overthinking enough. <laughs> and what we forget is that these are kids and these are all busy families. And it's great to have once a month, twice a month, a really easy, fun meeting. Those are sometimes the most memorable meetings for these kids and the most fun. Um, so don't make it hard on yourself. I think we all tend to make things a little harder on ourselves than, than necessary. And if you're going to do a board game night, I do highly recommend any game but Monopoly. I've been finding kids, mm -hmm. even Monopoly Junior. They, they have PC fits on that. <laughs> it's so long. <laughs> But they love Sorry and Uno and all those type of games. We just recently did one a month or two and it, you know, with all the dens, dens versus dens, and they had a great time doing it. They brought a buddy and we're just hoping, praying that out of the three that was interesting, we gain three of them in the upcoming month. That's excellent. Yeah. Our, it's... Our, our RC cars. We, um, oh, yeah. We, a few, a few people, a few adults, let's just say, wanted wanted an excuse to buy them so uh we made it we made one of our den meetings and we actually it was one of the few activities that we actually had a second den meeting because everyone said that's it we just want to do this again next week um it, it totally no yeah, bells just random. Nothing. It was just yeah. that is you could set up like you could have the kids set up their own obstacle courses and maybe do races, you know, through the obstacle courses, even if you want, if you wanted to make it more complicated than it is. Um, well, they had but, fun crashing into each other. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a real, that's a real derby right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> One of the fun things uh, that wasn't on the list, and I think uh, Cindy mentioned it. Uh, I know Massive E6 coming up with their Pinewood Derby for the district one, but mm -hmm. you can do multiple Pinewood Derbies out of the year. Um, our pack, uh, we do ours in beginning of the year. But spring and fall, we've been getting into Lego derbies using the same Pinewood Derby track. And the kids get to you while the night before we're setting up the track, all the kids get to come down. We have Legos all over the place that's been donated to us or they bring in their own. Um, they get this little cart that's exactly the same size as a Pinewood Derby, but you can put any type of Lego on it. And they're hanging out with their buddies building their car while the adults are setting up the track. Then they can leave them there for the day or, you know, depending on how your setup is, um racing that same day afterwards you don't even have to put the electronics on because really the kids don't care they just want to crash them at the end of the track um so kind true. of like what paul was saying they, they just love hanging out and crashing these things and watching the legos blow up all over the place and trying to rebuild again um our um charter um our head charter person uh father david he he had more fun with it because he's down there playing just like a kid you know, and if you can get your head charter, you know, really into it, that's a bonus for you. That's so true. They just, like you said, they just want to break things. <laughs> if you're ever looking for those Lego Derby things, I'll end up posting some of those because they do a lot down south and out west, these Lego Derbies. Um, and they're about the same price as a regular Lego car. And you can really? use have a Lego there. I think there may be a dollar more. Uh, I think the re regular Pinewood Derbies are like five bucks. The Lego mm -hmm. Derby cars, it's the same um, wheels as a Pinewood Derby. It just the chassis part of it is a long blue Lego. And oh my gosh, I love it! And they're I think they're like six fifty. That includes the shipping. You know, we bought eighty of them. That way we can use them as a you know half of them for a recruiting, and then the kids can buy one, and then they can hold on to it for the rest of their lives if they want and keep coming mm. back. With the same thing. Um, but you know, they're very simple ways to recruit. Uh, you get some of those demo tracks that they have at the scout shop for the Pinewood Derby. Use that as a Pinewood Derby uh, Lego kit at a recruiting table. You know, something very yeah. simple to do. So as long as the kids are having fun, you have a higher chance to pull them in. That's so true. And most and of those kids just love to, Legos, too. <laughs> and the parents don't have to pull out the chain, you know, the power saws and the chisels and stuff to try to make a block of wood. That's true. <laughs> I know sometimes that gets pretty complicated. Although they, you know, the kids love designing their own car too, of course, and seeing it 
you know, being cut and everything. That's a lot of fun. But I love the Lego Derby idea for sure. I'm surprised our pack never did one because we had a lot of kids that were very much into Legos. Um, but that would be a lot of fun, especially to bring a friend and um, they could even build the car together with the friend that they bring, which, which is a great, you know, teamwork activity. But um, a lot of great ideas. Um, anyone else have um, an idea that worked out or even if it was one of these ideas, any ideas that worked out with your unit or that that was just fun that you did with your unit that you think would work as a recruiting event? Feel free to just chime in. You're not all gonna be silent, are you? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I, know I think we're gonna play a, the RC thing next year big time. People seem to like that. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, oh, Amy, I think you were sharing something. <laughs> yeah, I know that it was two years ago before COVID hit, we had done a combined unit event where it was two different units. We com combined them um, for one cook-off. They had a rubric of what they had to do. Um, it had to be, you know, allergy safe. It had to be under $15 and it was pairs of two, and we paired them up, the one good cook, the one inexperienced cook, which um, my, one of my scouts is wanting to reach out to a couple of the packs that have girls and invite to do one scout with one wee below type deal, and they have to come up with a dish that you would cook at summer camp or at camp or in camping or whatever and then prepare it on the, the camp stoves or whatever way you want to prepare it, whether it's cold meal, hot meal, it was up to the kids. Uh, the most unique dish that we got was an oriental um, stir fry with a Spanish rice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't ask, it tasted good and it paired nicely. Don't ask me how these kids did it, but they did wow. it. it was under $15 and allergen friendly. The cook off so, idea is a great idea. I love that. Yeah. So that's one of the ideas that one of my scouts had come up with. That's excellent. I love that. I love pairing them up with the um, less experienced scout, too. That's a great idea, you know, because then you can kind of work on some. Um, edge methods as well, um, you know, teaching teaching the other kids um, if these are older scouts. Um, but even the younger scouts gives them that introduction to, you know, going through the steps, reading the directions, making sure the other person understands and working together and then doing something fun. They don't even realize they're learning anything, right? <laughs> they're just doing something yeah. fun. <laughs> we actually had a mishap where one of the stoves, one of the camp stoves decided to stop working. And to see another team stopped what they were doing because they were almost done and continued to help this other team. That's so nice. Of, it, 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 unimaginable. That's so that's so great. I love that. It's just so many great things happening with that one event, you know. And you sit and think, oh yeah, we'll just have a cook off and it'll be fun to see what they come up with. But they're learning so much more at the same time. Yeah, and um, she was thinking. You know, the, yes, some of the dens that are packs that have the girls in it, but also, you know, pairing up with maybe a couple male troops as well and getting both sides of the group coming at the same time. I love that. I think you're reading ahead to my slides because I do mention pairing up with other units. <laughs> it's like we work together on that. <laughs> no. Um, because I mean, having two units together worked really well. Mm -hmm. And like, it was quite interesting to see it. And after the competition, because the competition was day one, and the adults cooked dinner because the kids did lunch, um, to see the interesting developments, um, it was quite unique. That's so great. I love that. And again, love how you paired up with other units too. I think that's a great idea. I think sometimes 
a lot of us, um, I say us too, because I've been a volunteer for almost eight years now too, you know, you almost get competitive, like, oh, you know, we're, we're uh, competing with this other pack, right, for kids or this other troop. And we're all in it together. I mean, we're all trying to get more kids into scouting in New Hampshire, and it's all the same, really. And it's if scouting isn't successful for others, it won't be successful for us, too. Um, so it really is. Um, a joint effort. And the more kids that we get into scouting, whether it's your unit or another unit, it, it's, it's okay because it's all, it's all really for the same cause and, and for the kids. And it is fun. You know, I always say there's like strength, strength in numbers, you know, sometimes the more kids that you have and, and the more adults that you have, it number one, takes some of the pressure off of some of the adult volunteers when you, when you have a bigger pool to choose from. Right. But also it, um, it's, it's really fun for the kids to just be exposed to other kids and, and maybe not just the kids in their unit all the time. So it's a great idea. Does anyone else have anything to share? I'm kind of thinking that we constantly forget that we're recruiting not only kids, but adults. And that is the strongest and the most important part of everything we do. Um, I, I, one thing I came up with, and actually a bunch of us came up with, was to have an adult leader, like camp out weekend, someplace where we all sit around and enjoy each other's company and do it well before, before uh, uh, school, mm -hmm. like maybe right after Carpenter is done. And all we do is talk about membership, wow. how to do things, how to get everything going. Um, we've had poor, um, poor luck with spring recruiting because we pretty much shut down during the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just the way that we have always been. But this is some really cool ideas, I think. Oh, awesome, Tom. Thank you. And I love, love that you brought up recruiting adults, too. As you said, it's so important and we're so focused on getting more kids in but you got to recruit the adults at the same time. And I know it's easier said than done, trust me, because I still have to beg some of my best friends that are in the, in the unit to help us out, right? We're all, we all kind of have those friends that are like, come on. <laughs> um, but again, we say that we want to keep it fun for the kids because that's how they join and that's how they stay. It's same goes for the adults, right? We're all still in scouting because it's fun for us. Our friends are in scouting, you know, our co-leaders are people that we want to hang out with. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but everybody that I know, um, my closest friends and the best people I know are in scouting, right? I see people shaking their head. I mean, I love these people. And, you know, and so why not like, ah, man, Josh is going, maybe. <laughs> 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 it depends on the day <laughs> you know so it's it's really a great idea Tom I love that you brought that up to do a camp out with the adults let's not forget about the adults right or you know maybe you do a cookout and some of the older kids are kind of entertaining the younger kids again pairing up maybe with a troop and a pack um, and the adults are around the campfire you know catching up and talking about life and just you know and having a good time um, you know, that's how, you know, when the other adults that haven't volunteered yet, when they see the bond between your unit leaders that you've created because of outings that you've had, because of how you work together as a team, because you go and you meet out for dinner and maybe drinks or coffee or something before or after the unit meeting, they're going to naturally want to get involved because they're going to say, you know what, these people are having fun. And look, look what they're doing with the kids and look how happy the kids are. And it, it is a natural progression. It may not happen immediately for, you know, unfortunately, we want it to happen immediately. Um, but as those kids come in, you know, ask their parents or ask their adult that comes with them, you know, oh, what do you like to do? Do you like camping? Do you like hiking? Oh, you know, would you like to plan a hike for next month? You know, and start them off really really small let's not scare anybody away right <laughs> you know okay. so don't even say if we want you know talk to the, with the kids you got to talk to the whole family mm -hmm. and you don't want just your kids we want all of you bring bring the whole family because really scouting became a family type program 
Yeah. It's very true. And my whole family, you know, has been involved one way or another for the past eight years. You know, we, we all got dragged in. <laughs> if I remember the previous generation, my grandparents, actually, uh, they always had this one saying, especially in the bathroom, uh, family that sticks together plays together. Mm -hmm. you know? so that saying still works even today. It does. And I think it just increases your bond even more with with your own kids and with your kids' friends. Yeah. And not just um, that, it also brings the, you know, inspiration for the adults to stay young. You know, I know a lot true. of people, I can tell you right now, I've watched some of these people and it blows my mind when they tell me how old they are. I'm like, really? And find out they've been in scouting for 20 plus years and they've been very active. That's worse. My father says the same thing. Scouting's kept them younger. Um, yeah, I met your dad and he is, he's so energetic. <laughs> And it's true, that does keep us young when we're out and we're doing these awesome activities. And when you create these friendships with the other adults, because, you know, it's great to laugh with other adults. It's great to compare stories. It's great to plan these events with, um, you know, our, our fellow scouters as well. So I love that. Um, and best yet, what parent wouldn't want to know the, your kid's friends that he hangs out with? You want to know those parents too. You know, you know, they're going to be in a safe place. You feel comfortable that uh, about those adults that are also keeping an eye on your kid. That's uh, so true. I know. Um, yeah. Many times it's like, oh, you know what? Um, oh, yeah, they're they're a scout parent. Like, they're fine. <laughs> and we definitely, um, you know, I definitely have a different bond with those parents like those parents. I let my kids drive in the car with them and I, you know, they go out with them if I can't if I can't be there or if I need help, you know, who do you reach out to? You reach out probably to a fellow scouting parent because they're always up to the challenge. <laughs> um, so I, I, actually, I have a question. Yeah, sure. How, how can Granite Base Camp help the units? Oh, thanks, Paul. I know that's, a, I'm glad you brought that up. You see at the bottom there, I said Adventure Day at GBC, which was Granite Base Camp. I was too lazy to write it out. Um, so Granite Base Camp offers a lot of programming. Uh, Granite Base Camp is at Camp Carpenter in Manchester, and they do offer online programming as well as in person. Um, a lot of online merit badge workshops um, and um, other online activities as well. But they also offer um, day camp throughout the summer. There's also a day camp happening this week. And the thing is with Granite Base Camp is that it's our public facing program. So it offers the scouting program without really saying it's scouting to all kids, all families. They can be scouts, they don't have to be scouts. A lot of them don't even really, the non-scouters don't realize that they're even utilizing like a scout camp half the time. Okay. So adventure days um, are every Saturday, um, they're, they're, they're pretty much open every Saturday. There's very few Saturdays that, that they don't run program. And it's $20 for a day pass. And you can utilize all the activities, archery, BBs, um, arts and crafts, sports, um, the list goes on. And you can have your friend, you know, um, have your friend, have a, your scout bring a friend because it's open to the public. Um, their family can go, they, they, you know, buy a pass for $20 each and experience all these activities that happen to also be scouting activities as well. So it introduces them to Granite Base Camp and Camp Carpenter, as well as um, all the fun activities without your unit leaders having to plan a day's worth of events, right? This is taking the pressure off of you guys and saying, hey, we're offering this programming, just bring your people and come enjoy it. So, so um, the question, it's the a extension program as well. The question I have as a den leader thinking about this is, is there, how, is there a way or do they offer a customized program? For example, if, if, we, if we're working as a den on a, a belt loop that is mostly, you know, all outdoors, you know, mm -hmm. the cooking, one of the cooking belt loops or something like that, at Cub Scouts, 
is there a way that we can contact people from the camp and say, can you put together a customized program like that that covers this belt, belt loop? So I could sign up my den and maybe go there instead of trying to do mm -hmm. some of these activities in my weekly den meeting. Is that even that's a great question? And I know yeah, I know they do. I, I know they do something similar to what you're talking about, Paul. And it's a great question. I would suggest emailing support at nhscaling.org because okay. as you know, that's our system and it gets filtered in and um and our camp staff, our programming staff can definitely point you in the right direction. Um, it's definitely not impossible. I know we do similar, um, you know, we do a lot of activities that relate to belt loops. Um, and um, yeah, as Jillian said, Allison's always looking for ideas um, and she's offered to help teach cooking in the summer. And you're absolutely right, Allison, our general manager for um, Granite Base Camp, she is open to all sorts of ideas and, and knows the scouting program like the back of her hand as well. Yeah, because I know as a, as a, Cub, oh God, yeah, no, I'm a scout master, uh, cub master. Um, one of the challenges I get when I try to recruit um, adults to be den leaders is they start looking at some of the belt loops and like that just scares them. And it's like, you know, is there a way I could be like, you know what, which ones are you comfortable with? Okay, mm -hmm. if you're not comfortable with these and there's nobody else in, in the, you know, any other other parents of the den that are comfortable, you know, yeah, you might have to pay the 20 bucks per kid for the day, mm. but you know, that's like nothing today compared to everything else we pay for entertainment for a day for our kids is, you know, you can go to Camp Carpenter on a Saturday or make an arrangement and have this belt loop, you know, right. pretty much <laughs> taught by, you know, some staff members. You know, I'm just trying to, you know, make it easier to build up the team because it, it is very difficult a lot of times getting, you know, when we're going out to recruit tigers, it's like we get all these, we get tigers, but then no one wants to be a den leader. And it's like, okay. And then by the time you get someone to be a den leader, you've probably lost half the tigers that you got. Right. Or it's, lions, you know, lions now because they're mm -hmm. the swans. You're absolutely right. It's um, really difficult because, you know, there's a lot expected from the volunteers when it comes to planning and pre-planning and, and sometimes getting some of the materials. Um, Aaron had just wrote in the chat, um, you know, is it free if you have an adventure card? Yes, that's true. If you have an adventure card, the adventure days are actually free. Um, it's not mandatory for your, your whole unit to have to, you know, acquire an adventure card. But I often suggest that it might be something that the unit looks into. Like maybe you have a great fundraising season and you offer to pay for part of the adventure cards for your kids, um, you know, or, you know, you use it as an incentive. Like maybe if someone sells $600 worth of popcorn that they also get a free adventure card that you purchase um, online as well. Um, so adventure days are free with the adventure cards. Thank you for bringing that up, Aaron. And you also get a lot of discounts on camp and other special programming as well. So it, it, there is a good benefit to acquiring that adventure card. Um, One of the things I would suggest uh, when, if you contact Allison and, you know, obviously she's getting ready for the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, most units pack levels, they're already probably getting ready to have their yearly planning meeting. You know, it, and then I would hope that most of the den leaders kind of have a half year planning meeting of what advancements they want to do. If they're doing something like that, they can always have that list. The club master, or the committee chair from that unit can, you know, relay some of that information to Allison and maybe they can come up and say, hey, well, we, we can maybe do one month. And we'll promote it to, the, you know, throughout and have as many units come down because, of course, it's going to help out some of those younger den leaders that are fresh to the water. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it'll be very helpful to have the extra support and staff to help run those, specifically the harder advancements. Um, the younger ones are, I find, a lot easier to do. It's once you get past bear, it's a little bit more difficult because it's a lot more ruggish advancements. Um, but again, if, if those units work on their yearly calendar, 
for a half year calendars at mm -hmm. least that will be a great benefit to have Allison maybe bounce back and forth with a lot of units and figure out, hey, maybe we can, you know, April vacation will be geared towards this. It'll be, a, you know, I think last summer during the pandemic or be prior to that, they had the summer camp in a box type of thing for those specific mm -hmm. advancements. They can she can probably do something like that, but the more yeah. vacation she gets, it'll help her committee and her crew. And that's what we need in this um, I know Sydney will probably communicate some of this information too on top of whatever emails that go through support. You know, and that's that that brings up a great point. You know, like those boxes that they had what two summers ago because there was no camp or something. Mm -hmm. you know, it was like, oh, set things of you know, materials you need to do different things. You know, you know, maybe that's something we need to think about. You know, maybe. You know, not putting together the box themselves, but is there a way for each of, at least of the Cub Scouts, for each of the different levels, be like, okay, if you're going to be the den leader for this year, here's a list of, you know, okay, for these, you know, these required bell loops and maybe this um, alternate one, this, these are the materials you're going to need to run through all these things. So it's, you know, someone can just take a list and go, okay, what do I have at my house? The, okay, what do I need to order on Amazon and have it delivered? You know, right. instead of the going through each of the, you know, each of the things, because some of the, some of the bell loops probably require some of the same materials, but just in one handy thing, you know, maybe and put it up there and be like, here, just pull these down. This is, you know, these are geared to these these belt loops. You know, this is what you just need to have. You know, or when the parents come and say, "Oh, what can I? What can you? You know, what do you need us to donate or you know to this den, so you're not out buying and be like, here's a list of what we who can who can who can donate this or who can bring this stuff that make it really easy. I don't know if it, if it exists. If it doesn't, maybe that's something to look into. Um, yeah, I know there's some I materials because that'd, that'd be a great project. Yeah, that, that is a good wood badge project, Polly, right? <laughs> um, that sounds like a wood badge ticket. <laughs> yeah, that definitely sounds like a wood badge <laughs> ticket. You know? uh, so, Paul, one of the other things, other than Grant Base Camp, uh, one of the things I, I actually have a, it's a one page form for the lions and tigers. Actually, I have one for every rank at the cup sale level for the Boston Museum of Science that tigers can actually earn doing an open at it or just a day trip down to the Boston Museum of Science. They can earn five, uh, three of them are required ones and two of them are electives at the Boston Museum of Science. And you just need to spend 20 minutes or 30 minutes in certain exhibits. And one of them's if you go down there for the overnighter and you do the stargazing planetarium, that's one of the things you got to do a whole stargazing thing, especially during the wintertime. Nobody wants to stargaze out in the freezing cold. Right. <laughs> well, they're showing you the night sky that that would be happening that very night. So you're inside safe, looking up in a nice warm place. Um, the overnighter, um, Robert, just so you know, that's going to start up supposedly in the fall from what I understood. Um, she asked about the overnighters in the chat, uh, but the lines are the same way. But I do have it as you go up in ranks, it's a fewer and fewer. Once you get to AOL, they get like two pins that they can wear. The overnighters they do a lot of STEM programs. Mm -hmm. at the overnighters, I believe the C Museum does a lot too. Yeah, um, so a lot of those type of local places have a lot of advancements that den leaders can take advantage of. But the Boston Museum, I always promote. To go to for the Cub Scouts, especially the Tigers, they gain the most out of it. Mm -hmm. but, Josh, I Josh, wonder if we can put a, together. You know, that's that's oh. another great idea. You know, is there a way to get like these types of things on a page or, you know, I, I, I'm saying a page. I was just going to say that. <laughs> website that says, are you looking for different ways to do these bell loops? You know, if you go to this place here, that will cover this belt loop and I know I, I'm focusing on Cub Scouts but you know the same general thing with, with, with Scouts BSA again you know you know putting this stuff com a compiling and putting it so we can mm -hmm. really you know because we do not want scouting to turn into a dump and run type of activity for kid kids meaning drop off your kids and someone else it's it's supposed to be a family 
activity. But we got to realize that, you know, you know, parents are busy and, you know, the last thing they want to do is, you know, that, it, you know, we got to make it so the entry, you know, the entry is easy and the entry to that parent that we want as a leader, it, you know, is easy for them. And, you know, I think sometimes that's where we, we can, as an organization, we just kind of fail sometimes. Um, yeah, and some of the people that have been in it for a very long time, we know the lingo, we know, we just know it and we just automatically assume a lot of the new people just get it right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things about the resources you're just talking about, Paul, I'm like I for the Boston Museum and I have a few other places that I've done. I do have it all broken down on uh, forms that's very user friendly. Um, I was actually planning on that in the fall for a round table and I'm going to probably spread that around to other round tables because if it helps out den leaders work their own dens, you know, having those type of resources to make their lives easier, it's beneficial that they can focus on the fun part too. And, and the other the other thing, Josh, you know, uh, you know, not only have it at the round table, but we got to also think about it. You know, is there a way to get it on the website? Is there a way to get it on Facebook per se, the council thing? Because, you know, unfortunately, not everyone goes to the round table. Right. There'll be there are many people that will never go to round table. And then, you know, they turn around and say, how come I didn't know about this? Well, OK, yeah, I've been trying to. I've been you know, we have to adapt to different ways and find out from people, you know, unfortunately, okay, how, how do we get this information to you? Because we're not, we know as much as we beg and plead you, you're not <laughs> going to do this or you're not going to do that. But how do we get it to you? Yeah, and that's one thing I'm hoping at some point, I'm going to have it all down, um, digitally yeah. downloaded. I'll probably talk with Sydney more about trying to find ways to have it yeah. uploaded. Yeah. Yeah. And, and by the way, Tom, I like your idea about adults. Like an adult camping trip. Mm -hmm. Tom's having dinner. Tom's having dinner. <laughs> uh, no, I'm. We're yeah, having I'm just surprised you're saying that after fire. having to camp with me all last all last weekend. Basically. I know. I'm still <laughs> trying to get over it. <laughs> yeah, I know you're still trying to get That's over great it. Great <laughs> Um No, oh, we have an emergency. Trying to find the timer for the Pinewood Derby this weekend. Sorry. <laughs> Oh gosh, sorry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's Midnight. a good point, Paul. Midnight at your house, have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that, Paul, because um, you know that that is one of the reasons why you know we've been very adamant about forming a membership committee, as you know, because I know you and I talked about that too, because we really need to have like a, a programming chair that uh, and a programming committee that can really help us put those things in place. Um, like Josh said, you know, he has kind of a list going. It'd be great to have um, a committee really focused on that to make things easier for our den leaders to find and, and utilize those tools for, for their programming because programming is the most important thing. If you don't have a strong program and if you don't plan for your entire year um, in June, it's you don't, you a don't, struggle. Um, yeah, you don't do well. Right. And I'm gonna I gotta readjust a lot of that too, Paul, because a lot of the uh, advancements that just recently retired this upcoming mm -hmm. month, I gotta adjust some of those so I can take those out before it gets any further. But do be aware you gotta give information to people five different ways. Oh yeah, nobody uses the same platform. Mm -hmm. But if they know it's out there, hopefully they'll be the adults and ask for it. Well. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm willing to help the kids, but I can't help the adults. I'm not holding my hands. They can be a dad. Oh my goodness. But, that's, you know, that, that's where I come in, buddy. But I, 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 like Paul, like you said, a lot of people that don't go to Roundtable, I, I just went to three of them, uh, three different units in the past week, and it was surprising when I talked to some of the adults to even know what Roundtable was. Right. Um, it, and that's the fault of the district not getting a hold of them or the previous unit leaders that didn't inform them no that's not that's not them figuring it out they get information josh 
in five different ways. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll we'll talk about that after the fact. But <laughs> lots of challenges, I know. Um, so as we talked about, I think it was Amy that was talking about um, involving other units, which I love that. And like I said, I think she was cheating and she saw my next slide. <laughs> um, but um, strength really can be in numbers. So, um, you know, if you're a pack that has a partnering troop or a troop that has a partnering pack, um, maybe your troop plans a bring a buddy event, um, you know, that um, targets the pack families and, and there and everyone brings a friend, the troops, the troop kids can bring friends and the pack kids can bring friends. And it can be like different stations, it could be um, a bunch of games outside, it could, you know, what it, whatever it is. And, um, and really make that into a big event. And then the younger kids get to see the older kids, which just inspires them and makes them want to stay and be cool like the older kids as well. Okay. Um, if you have a smaller pack, again, maybe you team up with another local pack, like Amy said, great idea. Uh, more leaders equal more help with event planning and supervision and more kids just make all the games a lot more fun. Hectic, but fun. And then maybe you want to create a troop versus pack or a troop versus troop or even a pack versus pack challenge, like a field day or, you know, a scavenger hunt or relay races or minute to win it games. Kids seem to love those minute to win it games. And they're all super easy and really, really inexpensive to do if, if they cost anything at all. Um, and then going back to some fun scouting stuff, you know, maybe you practice skits and songs and then you offer to perform them in front of the other unit and encourage all the scouts from your unit and the other unit that you're going to be working with to invite friends to the performances. And then you can teach them scouts, you know, skits or songs or even some of the cheers um, as well, or challenge them to make up their own den cheer that, you know, the new kids can make up their own den cheer too. And um, this is probably, my computer is so slow. This is probably should have been at the top, but I guess this, you know, um, we left, maybe saved one of the best things for last, a new member coordinator for every unit and at every district level and at the council level is extremely important. This should be the number one volunteer role that you aim to fill if it's not already filled. The new member coordinator role is an outgoing, fun, energetic person, um, and it's a very engaging position. So you want to get your outgoing folks here. You're obviously not going to ask a quiet, introvert, a quiet introverted person to take on this role. This is a role for a very, very outgoing people person. This person is good at forming relationships with the new members and their families. They're making them feel included and welcomed all the time. They're recruiting not only the new kids, but the adults into key leadership positions. Um, this role does have training on my dot scouting. So you, you can have training as well. Um, this new little, you'll see the little welcome logo um, there um, on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, that is actually downloadable and you can create those into buttons. Um, and have your new member coordinator wear that button so that way they're easily identifiable. So when new people come in, you can say, oh, you know, go see your new member coordinator, they have the welcome button. Um, and um, definitely encourage, you know, just because you have a new member coordinator, it doesn't mean that's the only person that focuses on membership. Membership in general is the most important thing. If we don't have members, we don't have units, we don't have scouting. So really, start creating a team. You know, maybe you have multiple people in the membership roles. You know, maybe one person plans all the membership activities. Maybe one is the welcome person and uh -huh. knows all about joining fees and how to get those families started. Maybe another person recruits the leadership roles. And then they also work as a team with their district membership chairs and then with their council committee as well. So it really is a team effort. And to me, I mean, obviously, I'm super into membership because that's my role. But even before I joined at a council level, like this is the most fun thing for me. I love talking to people. I love talking to people about scouting and, and I love working with the kids. So it really is a fun team to be part of when you're part of the membership team. And definitely, you know, that's something that you want to share with folks that 
you think will be good with this role, that this is a really fun role. It's a people person role. And you get to talk about why scouting is so great and why they should join your unit. And it's a unit that you hopefully love because you're a part of it. So it's it's really easy for that person who, um, who you know is able to talk to people, but not only that, who really is passionate about scouting. Um, so um, with the new membership role, this person should be really, really fluent in my.scouting slash be a scout.org and updating those pins, managing the leads and the invitation and application managers. So um, one of the things if you when you when you host, I was gonna say if you host, but when you host your recruiting events, before you do, go to your unit's invitation manager on my.scouting and download your unit's pin QR code. And I will show you where that is. Or you can also copy and paste the URL. But you guys have probably all heard by now all about QR codes. It's like the latest thing. You can see it there, that little digital looking square on that photo that I um, have on the right-hand side of the screen. That is a QR code. And if you scan it with your camera um, or your QR code scanner on your smartphone, it brings you to, especially this, this particular QR code, it brings you to Dana Webster Council's invitation manager. So if I went to an event with a mobile base camp and I scanned DWC's QR code and um, you know, want to, I would enter in all my information and that goes into the council's invitation manager. And then I would be notified that we have a new lead sitting in the invitation manager and it has their name, the kids ages, where they live, email, phone number, all that stuff. So I can contact them and say, Hey, thanks for you know wanting to learn more about scouting. You know what are the questions you have, and um, you know then here are some units that you can choose from. All that fun stuff. When they go into your invitation manager, they obviously go into your units invitation manager, and you can call them after your event. Um, say, hey, you know, um, what did you like about the event? You know, did you know any kids in the unit? And you know, our next meeting is coming up on Tuesday. I'd love to invite you to come check us out again, no obligation. And um, you know, if you have more questions, let me know. And then follow up with the email maybe on that Friday before your meeting or Monday and say, don't forget about our meeting, put the location, the date, the time, your contact information, your Facebook page, your website, whatever, all those, all the things that they might want to look at before they come join you. And then that way at the meeting, they already have some information. And then you can start talking to them about scouting, you know, what you guys do for the year, what, what your unit enjoys doing, and then start talking about whether they're interested in registering with your unit and what that would look like. So um, going back to the QR code specifics, you can add the QR code to um, a flyer or to a photo like I did here. Um, you could just print out the QR code on regular printer paper. Um, this is attached to a different flyer and you probably saw the scout on extravaganza, but you could take up the whole paper really with the QR code and just say, you know, check in here and have it be part of your membership table and ask folks to check in by scanning that QR code and entering their information. That automatically gives you lead information, contact information, and um, and it's easy for them to do. It's on their phone. A lot of people have autofill, so it takes just two seconds for them to do it as well. Um, and so we covered following up with the guests, and then um, and then yeah, and then calling to see. You know, don't forget follow up is key. And I know a lot of us are short on time, but one of the things that I do that helps me save a lot of time is I create like templated emails. So I have an email for like my first contact with a lead. And then I have an email that focuses on the first follow-up. And then I have a, a email that um, talks about registering. So there might be something in your free time. <laughs> um, and not only that, actually, there are templates on um, the um, BSA Brand Center. I was gonna say the Marketing Hub. There are some on the Marketing Hub too. But on the BSA Brand Center, there are some Welcome to Scouting templates. And you can download those and you can work off of those. A lot of those templates are first contacts with people, your first touch. 
And then you can kind of elaborate on those to help make your other templates as well. And just keep them um, you know, saved on your computer um, to follow up when you, when you need to. Um, Jillian was saying that they have business cards um, with codes on them that we hand out and it takes you to our pack page with all the welcome info. Aaron says they have the cards too. Love that idea. The business cards are great. You can, you can also download the um, bring a buddy cards from the membership marketing hub as well. And you could add your QR code to those and print those out as well. Great idea. I love that. Super easy way for them to, to make sure that they're walking away with the information. Any questions about that? One thing I would recommend with it, if you do get a lead through the BS scouting, it does make a difference the timestamp of when you respond. Mm -hmm. I find if it's there for over 48 hours and they don't, they probably already got contacted by another unit or they've already given up. Um, I normally try to do within 24 hours. Um, I get notifications once a ping goes up, I do get a email alert. Um, sometimes it goes to my junk, sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, so whoever's gonna be managing that pin, um, make sure that they are aware that they're going to get those notifications. Yeah, very good point. Whoever is managing the pin, you know, make sure that person is checking their emails and able to follow up. Um, you're yeah. must, much less likely to close the deal if you wait more than 24, 48 hours. It has to be a really quick turnaround to get that information to your leads for sure. And normally it's one of the key three that are on the, that part anyways, but it's whoever they put down as the contact that's the person that's going to get those email notifications. So if somebody's changing over and that we have a new person going into the unit, make sure they're aware uh, if they get, get it and they're asking us certain questions and they can't answer it. Like, all right, I got a, a young boy that uh, would be in third grade. All right, you can uh, forward it or email it back with the den leader. That would probably go into that den that if you already have a den leader, you know, that way they can kind of talk back and forth Mm -hmm. uh, event dates and stuff that might work specifically for the den um, besides pack outings. But right. And like you said too, uh, like if, if they have specific questions that you can't, you know, and you're the person answering the email, at least reply to them and say, I'm, I'm working on that answer for you. You know, I'll get back to you soon. So they know that, you know, you're in contact with them and that you, that you saw the question um, and it doesn't, you know, cause them to get frustrated or, not interested because they think you're maybe not getting the emails or maybe ignoring them. And it, it, there's nothing wrong if there's a, a parent that contacts you and say, hey, you know, are you telling them that, hey, we meet on Thursdays and it doesn't work for them because they got karate that night? You know, maybe they might, you know, there's nothing wrong with steering them towards another unit that might be in the town, you know, as long as they're okay. getting involved somehow. But again, be helpful as well. You know, if it doesn't work for them, um, like we have our meetings on Tuesday, but we have another unit nearby that might be meeting on those Thursday nights, um, whatever one that can work for them. You know, there's nothing wrong with uh, helping out another unit on top of it, because again, the program's the same in all the units overall. Um, the same mission is the same. Exactly. That's such a good point, Josh. I think we always feel like if the unit doesn't work for a certain family for whatever reason, then they're done with scouting and they move on. Um, you know, you know, don't let them leave that easily. If you come across that that circumstance, you know, say, hey, you know, if this isn't working out for you, um, Pack 19, you know, meets here on these nights. Um, you know, feel free to check them out. It's a different group of people, or you know, it's a different night. It's a different time. Whatever the case may be, um, you know, that people can, um, you know, transfer from you know different units and. Sometimes that works for them. And sometimes it's just, maybe it's not a good fit either, but sometimes it's a better fit and it, and it works and we're keeping them in scouting, which is important. Um, just a few friendly reminders. Um, like we talked about, Adventure Days are every Saturday at Granite Base Camp. The Scout on Extravaganza, which I hope everyone has heard about at this point, especially uh, you guys here on, on, in the workshop, is May 7th. It's at Camp Carpenter in Manchester. Um, you can find the event information on the Facebook page. You can also register there as well. That is the ultimate kickoff to this year in scouting. 
Um, Josh will be there. I love it. Um, our, almost our whole staff will be there. I think we have one staff member that cannot make it. Um, so the whole staff will be there. We'll have scouting updates. We will um, talk a little bit about the membership plan. We will talk about incentives. And then we'll also have our council committees set up as well as um, our different you know, areas um, in the council as well. So there'll be like a membership table, the fundraising table, and then our different council committees. So you can see what's going on with all areas of scouting, as well as you can bring your family and you can experience all the stations at Granite Base Camp. So you can actually have hands-on experience at Granite Base Camp, see what it's all about, um, see how you can work it into your schedules for the year. Um, and it's free, it's all free. And I forgot to mention, there is free food too. That's the most important part. <laughs> so at eight o'clock, you come in for coffee and check-in and, and then there's pancakes. I mean, you can't pass up pancakes. And, um, and then um, everything to get us all ready and excited for um, more scouting. Um, there's a bunch of, oh, oh, sorry, Josh. It's scout pancakes, even better. It's scout what? Scout pancakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, scout pancakes are even better. <laughs> Agree. I'm excited. P breakfast food is my favorite food, so I'm very excited about that. Um, there are a lot of mobile base camp events coming up. Um, a lot of the events that um, that I book um, for the mobile base camp are very large community events, so we need a lot of volunteers. Tom, poor Tom knows. I message him all the time. <laughs> um, and uh, we do have an event that we haven't been to before. It's the WZID Family Fun Fest at the McIntyre City area. And we definitely need, and I know it's a busy weekend for scouters that weekend too. It's um, on the 14th, on May 14th, which is also the Winnie Derby, Derby weekend and a bunch of other weekends for us scouters. But if you can possibly join us for a little bit um, uh, in Manchester at the McIntyre City area, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, I sent out the link to uh, for the volunteer form today to all our unit leaders. If you didn't get it, let me know. Um, and I can obviously send it to the group here if you guys didn't get it. There's also um, the registration link for the Scalon Extravaganza. Like I said, that's on Facebook. Um, oh, and the Mobile Base Camp volunteer sign up form actually is on the membership and marketing hub. That's right. That's why I didn't put it here. It's on the Membership and Marketing Hub, and it's under Mobile Base Camp Reservations. You can find the particip participation form there. You can find the volunteer sign up there, the schedule, and of course, that's where you reserve it as well. Um, really quickly, the participation form is a activity waiver, and it's also a way for us to collect contact information for prospective leads. Um, it literally has three questions. It takes about two seconds to fill out. If the folks have autofill on their phones, it takes no time. I've had very, very, very few adults refuse to sign it. Um, usually they don't like, usually the few people that are hesitant don't love the idea of a QR code. Um, and we do have a hard copies of the forms in the mobile base camp. And then they usually have no problem filling that out for, for their child. It is a waiver, an activity waiver, um, as well as, like I said, it does collect some contact information for us too. Um, we don't spam them. It'll just be an email saying, hey, we noticed you're at the mobile base camp. This is what we have to offer. Are you interested? Um, and then we just follow up with them from there. Um, and then yes, the Winnie Derby is the weekend of May 14th. Um, I would highly uh, the 7th. What's that? Mother's Day weekend is on the 7th. So it's a great way to get a free breakfast for mom. Exactly. <laughs> Mother's Day brunch. <laughs> That's what I'll be doing. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Whatever way you can spin it to get them down there, you know? I know, right? <laughs> It's all in the sales pitch. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> and then just a few resources, which I like to share. Um, number one, be careful of copyright um, infringement. We actually did have an incident um, come up where um, some folks make flyers and they use images that are online like 
cartoons or something that someone else created or certain logos or images. The safest way to create a flyer is to use something like Poster My Wall or Canva. Um, they're free tools and they have lots of stock photos, lots of designs. Uh, that's the best way to go about it because you avoid any worries with copyright infringement. Um, copyright infringement, it sounds silly because I know we have the World Wide Web and everything you can copy and paste and save to your computer and all that fun stuff. But um, it is illegal to use other people's property without asking permission. And um, they do notice. <laughs> so please take note and please use something like Poster My Wall, or like I said, Canva, or if there's another free tool that you like to use out there, um, just be careful about using other people's images. Um, Sign Up Genius is a great tool for volunteers. Cognito, I've, I've become very familiar with Cognito Forms. That has been a great way um, to um, get volunteer signups or surveys or any type of RSVPs, anything like that. Um, Grammarly, if, you're, if your favorite thing isn't grammar, that's a really helpful tool to check your um, grammar if you're sending out emails. And then on the left is the Membership and Marketing Hub um, QR code. Um, all these slides will be available on the Membership and Marketing Hub as well um, under this recorded workshop. So you will be able to go back and see the workshop and see, um, refer to the slides as well if you like. Um, so I know um, we've shared a lot about membership, which is awesome, but um, is, does everyone here want a quick look at my.scouting, beascout.org? I'm gonna do a quick tour of that. So that way you can see um, where your pin QR code is, how to update and manage your leads and, um, and do the quick tour. And if I'm going too fast, or if, there, if you have a question while I'm going, please just chime in because I won't be able to probably see all your faces. Um, be a scout.org, you know, pins and updating those pins is super important as you guys know, um, because that is our lead management tool. And that's where we're gonna be able to um, keep track of, of the leads that are coming in, how we follow up, whether we, um, you know, recruit those families into our units. And if not, um, you know, it's always good to figure out, um, you know, where we went wrong. Um, just looking for my link here. Bear with me. I apparently have many tabs open. Okay. All right, let's see. All right, guys, I will get there. Yes, in that one. Uh, not all just staring. Uh, I know, right? Just staring me down. <laughs> it was disguised, I think that's why. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. Can you see the invitation manager? Yep. All right, perfect, yay. All right, here we go. So of course I went into Troop 19, for those of you that don't know, I'm the committee chair for Troop 19 in Nashua as well. Um, and this is what our invitation manager looks like. Um, I'll go back to the beginning just to walk you through the beginning actually, that would probably be, um, that would probably make more sense just so you can see how we get there. So obviously you log into my dot scouting, your my dot scouting login. Just to be clear, normally the ones that can do the pin are one of the key three. Just right. And then you can have um you, you can be made a delegate, a key three delegate, which would allow you um access as well. So if you are the member, if you're like the member, uh, new member coordinator, you might want to be a key three delegate. So that way you can go in and manage the leads as well if you're not already also a key three member. It's taking a while to load, my apologies. Oh. It's just working away here. Maybe I shouldn't have started from the beginning. <laughs> um, 
it was perfect timing because on Monday I went in to my dot scouting and um, none of my menus were showing up. And I was thinking, hmm, I hope this shows up by Thursday. And then Tuesday they weren't showing up and then I finally got in touch with National and they resolved that um, little hiccup. I don't know why it's taking so long. I would just hit the refresh. It does the same thing for me too, and I have to hit refresh or go back and try to go back and it gets all fussy. Yeah. Oh no. It was working fine earlier. <laughs> um, so when you sign to my dot scouting and you go up to menu, which I'll show you, which hopefully this will load. Um it gives you options if you're if you're one of your key three. Here we go. So up in the left hand side, it says menu, and then um, it'll show your unit, and you'll see application manager, invitation manager, organization manager, roster. So um, we want to uh, download our QR code to our pin, and that would be in the invitation manager. And the reason why it's in there is because the QR code is a QR code to the invitation manager. So that's why that makes sense. So if you're sitting there thinking, how the heck am I gonna find this? Um, you wanna download the tool that gets people into your invitation manager. So, um, so you come up to this screen and here's your pin status, your lead status. So um, usually if you have new leads, you know, new families that were um, wanting more information, a number would come up here. If you had new leads and you opened them but didn't do anything with them, um, that it would be under opened. If you had a new lead and let's say, or a new, if you had a new applicant, um, but they had to be transferred for some reason, um, this would be pending reassignment. Um, invitation sent, that means that you opened up the lead and you sent them an application to um, register with your unit. Um, closed means the lead just really didn't go anywhere. Um, you know, they never joined or they didn't get back to you after numerous attempts, all of that. So you close it out. Um, completed means they joined um, whether it was paper or online um, and the, it's, it's completed, they're joined, they're part of the program. Down here is your invitation QR code. You would download this code to your laptop, to your device, and it basically works like a photo works. So if you opened up a Word document and then inserted the picture and selected the QR code, that's how you could print it out. Um, and like I said, you could add it to like a flyer um, or, or a photo if you want to. But the most important thing is that you have that on hand for people to enter their information. You can also click copy URL and copy the URL to the invitation manager as well. That would be um, really useful if you were posting to Facebook because a lot of people view Facebook on their phones. So using a QR code isn't always the best option for Facebook or social media or email. Um, so you would copy the URL and paste it on a Facebook post. Let's say, you know, hey, we're um, you know, we're welcoming new scouts, you know, um, come join us, whatever, you know, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Um, this is how you can get more information and then post the URL there. And that way they could easily click on it and enter their information. Is there any questions about, um, about the invitation manager? The other, um, cool thing too, is that you can actually enter the new lead yourself here. In the upper right hand corner, it actually says new lead. And um, you can click on that and enter, you know, if, if let's say someone was like, I, I, don't, I don't have my phone on me and they're at your event or something like that. You can go into your invitation manager, click new lead, and then you could just hand them your phone or your device and they can enter all this in. And um, you can save and add another one. So if you had kind of a crowd of people, you can just save it and it would sit in your invitation manager. Or you could say, would you like me to send you an application? And you could send them an application right then and there as well. 
And then they would be, um, if you send them the application, then they'll end up in your application manager, which is a great segue to going into the application manager. <laughs> Cindy, can, can adults fill out applications online? Can, can adults can, apply can online? Adults, like adult yeah, volunteers? Like, like, the, like, the, um, like the kids do. Yes. Yep. I just, so they can... a, I, I just had an adult do it. Okay. The only, the only thing is you will need to have your, unless it's delegated, your COR will have to still approve it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. But it's yeah, thank you. Great question. Yeah, your adults can apply online. They have to do youth protection training, which will be linked to their application once it's completed. Um, so the COR, as Paul said, um, does have to approve that adult application, um, but they can't approve the application until YPT is complete. They also won't be fully registered into your unit and appear on your roster until the YPT is complete as well. And, and the um, background check automatically gets sent through? Right, automatically well. gets sent. Yeah, they, I think they somehow signed for it digitally online. Um, I know with the paper form, there's like a quick paper form that they sign at the bottom, but that will get automatically done um, digitally. Yes, the magic, the magic of the digital world. <laughs> cool. Great. Thank question. you, because that's been that's one of my questions that my units are asking, and I don't didn't think so. So thank you. Oh, you're you're welcome. I'm glad you asked. When you're setting up the application for the adult, the, there is a checkbox, which I don't know. Cindy might go into that part later. Um, when you have the key three or a delegate, there is a, a checkbox for adult application. If that's not checked, you're only going to get youth. So right. just make sure they that's have that the, the pin settings, right? Yeah. Settings. Yep, I, I, I can go through that real quick too. Um, so this is the application manager, and we don't have any pending accepting applications, but let's say an adult or a youth or an, or an adult registers their youth, your pending Ex, um, acceptance, acceptance would be here. Um, and then you would click view and down at the bottom, there would be a list and you can either click all of them here and um, approve them all or look at each one and approve them individually as well. Um, pending acknowledgement means that it, obviously they weren't opened yet. Um, um, the, a lot of times these, I don't see these utilized often, the applicant agreement or um, response here. Um, pending payment, normally they obviously are applying online, so they pay online. Um, reassignment, that would be if someone was, you know, transferring or requesting a reassignment to a different unit. Um, or a pending review, which is normally the adult application. Um, so um, as we stated, the, the COR must approve the adult applications. If they're having trouble approving it, uh, most likely, likely it's because that, that person does not have YPT completed yet. Um, or maybe they're pending payment, or maybe there's another issue that needs to be reviewed um, because a background check does go through. And sometimes um, once in a while, things may pop up that need to be um, reviewed by the scout executive. So that would be another thing that may hold up, hold up an application. I haven't seen that often at all, but um, it can happen. Um, and then, oh, we already did the invitation manager. Um, so those are, that's a real brief look at um, the application invitation manager. Um, I was trying to think of another example. There was, Oh, like during rechartering time, because we had a few that were like, I can't accept these applications and I keep clicking accept and they're not going through. Well, their unit wasn't rechartered yet. Um, and that causes a hiccup with my dot scouting and the applications. So um, if that's happening during rechartering time, most likely it's because your unit isn't rechartered for one reason or another. And once they're once you're rechartered, then um, you should be able to accept the applications and, and see your roster and um, and everything will be back to to order at, to how you know it and love it, right? <laughs> um, are there any questions, any more questions with um, applications or application manager? Did I cover 
there's not a ton to cover with application manager really other than making so sure for, each unit just needs to be aware that they should check at least once a week at the most um, sooner the better on sometimes it's a quick little check mm -hmm. When we are a full force, when we had the older council building, we did have some members that would, uh, I know like Steve Spaziani for Arrowhead, I would get an email from them and say, hey, you got a lead and it didn't come across my notifications because that's how I learned it went in my junk. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't really have that force right now. So it's really up to the units to be more prudent of checking on those, whoever that delegate may be. Um, highly recommend you let them be aware they should check often just in case if it goes in their junk mail. Absolutely. And it's true because you do get kind of random notifications and, and sometimes you have new leads in there or sometimes it's notifying you um, because there's an open lead that's still there. Um, and then so, and you don't, what I, what I don't love about it is that you don't get notified um, the second a new lead comes. I think they only notify you was it once or twice a week randomly. It's not because you have like a new lead from what I've seen. So it gets a little tricky. So definitely try to check it like Josh said often. I mean, at least once a week, um, but as we get into the fall, especially when there's usually a big uptake in new members, you wanna be checking it very often because you don't want people to lose interest or think that maybe you're not meeting or you're not active. Um, Especially after the recruiting night, so if you're having a recruiting night, check in the next 24 or 48 hours, especially if you had any that you handed out the QR code to. Those days, those nights that you have those recruiting days or, um, or those type of events, you have a higher likelihood that you're going to want somebody to check that often. Absolutely. Um, I was just scrolling here because this is where a lot of our trainings are too on my dot scouting on kind of your home page. Youth protection is up in the right hand corner in case um, you weren't sure where that lived. So that's my dot scouting as well. Um, so I'm going back into I'm going to do the organization manager um, because this is how you can um, update your pin. So the pin, um, just to put it out there for everybody. I, I know I keep referencing the PIN. So the PIN is actually what appears on BeASCout.org when someone is searching for a scouting unit. Your PIN is actually the details of your unit. So it would say Troop 19 um, with the contact information where they meet. You know, Troop 19 meets every Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Come join us. Here's our Facebook page. That is your unit PIN. So when we talk about updating your unit PIN, that is what we mean. And you wanna make sure that all your information is um, current and up-to-date, especially after rechartering, especially after maybe if you have a leadership change of some sort, you wanna go in and make sure that your contact information and your email especially and your website is all up-to-date. Um, I can't tell you how many websites I clicked on with random pins on um, bscout.org and the website's no longer even in use. Um, you don't want that to happen because then people are going to think you don't meet anymore or that maybe the unit doesn't exist anymore. So make sure all of that is up to date. If you don't have a website, you can put in nhscouting.org. That, um, that brings them to a homepage that gives them all the information about scouting. Um, and you know they can navigate from there. Um, our um, COR is John Arico right now <laughs> because we, um, council is actually our um, our chartered char char organization at the moment because um, we uh, moved away from Pilgrim Church. Um, so um, these are, are what we call the key three, your chartered org rep, your committee chairperson, and your scout master. Um, this is all in your organization manager and this is all your pins settings. So you want to go in here and check it and make sure it's all set correctly because sometimes after rechartering things get a little crazy and it kind of can reset or go back to some old settings. I've noticed there's some pins that suddenly weren't active or that they weren't accepting applications after rechartering. I don't know why that happens. The loveliness of internet and computers, I don't know. So just make sure that everything is where you want it to be. So um, as we talked about, your adult um, applicants, you want the chartered org rep approval required. Um, 
and um, youth applications, you can select to automatically accept them. Um, yeah. I like that. <laughs> I know, that's a good, it's a One it's more good thing I want to do as Cub Master. Yes, that's true. Um, even I'm, better because if you have to do the YPT that you know if they're going to actually be uh, really stepping up they're going to do the application and the YPT at the same time and we know how hard it is to get some of these other adults to do it yes if you get them right out the door it's a higher chance you're going to have somebody actually stepping up that's true I feel and like when willing to commit when youth or adults apply online it's a much quicker process as I'm sure you guys know because the payment is there. There's no question about payment. You know, we do prorated payments every month. So sometimes that gets tricky, but when they do it online, it's all paid up, they're ready to go and they're covered under insurance and they're ready to earn advancements in your unit. You know, they can't earn advancements without being registered. And, some, and sometimes um, a lot of our units that rely on paper, we have, we're getting advancements for scouts that haven't been registered. So, um, you know, really, really um, try if you haven't if you haven't already, really switch over to the digital applications. It's much faster. It's much more efficient, um, and it and like Paul said, it's it's less to worry about. Um, you want to allow adult applications. That's where you check it off right here. Um, your email settings. Um, some folks include um, like the extra fees that maybe your trooper pack has, maybe you do a spring fee of $25 or something like that. Um, we just address that after the, you know, as the focus, as the folks are registering. Um, uh, we do have a, a welcome email um, here selected and we create a little welcome email. So that way when they put their information in, they do get this automated response. Um, and basically, um, you know, putting in that we meet on Tuesday night starting at seven. I'm getting really close to the computer because again, I didn't put my glasses on. <laughs> Going blind these days. Um, and, you know, explaining what our activities are, the contact information and our website. And that's just really important to, you know, get all those details in there because then they're, they're, they're getting a response right away and then they know what to expect and they know when you meet. So they'll already know if they're a good fit um, for your group. Those online applications, when, you, when, you, when they sign up on that, especially at a troop level, within probably 72 hours, if you use Scoutbook, it will pretty much automatically pop on the Scoutbook mm -hmm. uh, to help you work with those advancements. Um, some of the adult ones, sometimes they take a little longer, uh, but I know with the youth ones, uh, it, it goes pretty quick. Um, if you hand in the paper one, it takes a little while because, again, you only have a limited amount of people up at council having to go through those statewide. Um, but if you do the online version within 72 hours, they're probably already up in scout book and you can already start working on their advancements and you don't have to, you know, you don't have to physically plug them in. They automatically go in. Right. That's true. That's, that's the beauty of the online world as well. When it's all working, right. <laughs> um, you know, there are, they already show up on your roster. It's true, Josh, it's much more convenient. Um, so if we actually go click on our unit pin over here. It brings you to your pin. And here, um, sometimes this somehow gets switched to only allow council to update this top one. Um, if you notice that when you select a unit pin, definitely send us a um, note at support at nhscaling.org. And we, will, we have to switch it, unfortunately, but we will switch it to allow units to update pin, which is what you want selected here. You want your pin to appear and be a scout, obviously. And you also want people, you want to allow people to apply online. So those two should be checked. Um, your contact information is here. So um, our scout master is the main contact and he put his personal email there. I do suggest having like a, a unit email. So let's say you have like troop19 at comcast, you know, dot net um, and have a few people that have access to it because God forbid if someone gets sick or if someone leaves really and, and isn't getting back to you or if they're not able to frequently check that, you know, that particular email, 
then other people have access and you're able to check it frequently and just keep that communication open with the other leaders too, that, hey, I saw this email, I did reply. Obviously they'll be able to see the replies in there as well, but I think it's a good idea to have a, uh, at least your key three probably uh, managing um, that particular email where your leads are going. Um, you can put in your unit website, or like I said, nhscouting.org is good too. Or uh, if you want to use Facebook as your website, you can put in your Facebook link there too. And then um, I see a lot of pins without this additional information. I um, am begging units to please, please put in additional information. Folks are, are busy these days and they're in a rush. If they don't see all the information that they need on the few clicks that they make, they'll probably lose interest pretty quickly. So, you know, put down what your unit enjoys doing. Definitely always include the days and times that you meet. The number one question that we get in these leads is what day do you meet? What time do you meet? And sometimes unit leaders don't get back to them really quickly. And those people lose interest um, because they're thinking, well, they couldn't even get back to me about when they meet, maybe they're not meeting. You know, and that really is the number one question. I can't tell you how many hundreds of leads I've seen that ask when a unit meets. So definitely put your day in time because that that will either um, sell them on your unit probably right then and there or say, okay, I have to find one that meets on Thursday. Tuesday doesn't work, like Josh was saying earlier. Um, and then um, if you have other social media or other information you want to share, definitely put the link there as well. Um, we put our Facebook link in that section as well and our date and time and that we, you know, enjoy hikes and high adventure trips and camping and all that stuff. So they get an idea of what the unit is like. And then down here, it's more display fields. And there are a lot of unit pins that don't have really much of their contact information displayed. Um, we have all of them displayed here, as you can see. Um, I would definitely say that you would want a name, phone number, and email of a main contact um, displayed on your pin because sometimes people do want to call and, you know, ask specific questions. Maybe they have a special needs kid and they really want to get a feel for whether that unit can, you know, accommodate them. Um, we have a lot of um, families that do call with questions about, you know, my kid is ADHD or they're autistic and what unit can can um, you know provide what they need. So um, definitely the contact information is important. And then this is where you can add your address and then you would just save it down below. That will light up if I made any changes and you click save and the, save, the saved information will appear within 24 to 48 hours on beascout.org. Um, you can see your unit's roster here as well. Um, you can see who's trained and what the positions are and the youth members and their member IDs. So if someone asks, if you're trying to, um, if you have to call member care for some, you know, or, or, you know, and get support and you don't know your member ID, you can go under a unit pin under roster and your member ID will be there. Just makes this it is, easier for us to search for you. <laughs> so that don't know, you're in the screen and you have a young scout that might be moving from your unit to another state and they might be looking for a unit. You can click on that individual scout and you can actually print them out um, their own uh, mm -hmm. BSA ID number to bring with them. That will help out the unit they, they might go to. So, you know, be the helpful scouter and, you know, if they're moving out of state for, you know, with their family provide them their BSA ID, because a lot of them really don't know, especially at the PAC level. Um, that would be really beneficial for them, as well as keeping them in the program, no matter where they are. And the adults should so I, too. I have a question about that one, Josh. I found out at ReCharter that somebody who, a, an adult leader who transferred from out of state in one state, they have an, their own ID number. And now in Daniel F. Council, they have another number. And that really did a screw up on their charter. Yes, most likely they filled out a separate application. But it, 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 these numbers are generally out of national, I believe. No, they're not. No? <laughs> Actually, I can attest to that. They have to. They're local to your council. Yeah. 
So I have one for Spirit of Adventure and one for Daniel Webster Council. But once you have to, once you get the new number, it does help them to have the old one. And then you can go into My Dot Scouting and merge the two so you can okay. switch between them. Okay. I know I just had one uh, last year. They they just came up from Florida, Southern Florida. They came up with their ID number, and I was able to plug them in right into even Scout Book, and they were able to be found. So, yeah, it does get tricky because there are some people too that um, they may log in, um, you know, do like a different login to my dot scouting, and then all of a sudden they have two ID numbers, and a lot of times, you know, we have to work to get those merged together as well. So it does get tricky. Um, um, so yeah, that that is frustrating. I'm sorry that happened. <laughs> um, it is a little tricky with the ID numbers. Um, if, um, if the youth um, has um, an updated app, you know, application on file, you can um, do a transfer on my.scouting as well but you just have to make sure that they are um, currently registered. A lot of times people try to just transfer um, youth. Um, for example, a lot of times we had, we had a lot of units that tried to transfer the AOLs into the troop, but they, they need a transfer application in order to actually be able to see them on, on their roster. Um, uh, so that, you know, that's a little, that's a little tricky, but um, you can do it through my dot scouting. Position manager, this is where um, you can, um, you know, your new member coordinator, you can add down here. Um, usually what happens is you can, um, obviously like it doesn't let me change certain ones, but um, because I'm one of the key three, I can, you know, add um, certain people in the positions here and the it would drop down to your registered leaders. So if they're not registered or youth protection trained, you're not gonna see them here. Um, so if I went to add and assign someone a position, um, see these are all our registered adults. And so I could go down and assign someone that position. This is in the position manager. Um, so we have two key three delegates because um, David is our um trainer our troop trainer uh training chair and richard is our advancement chair so we made them key three delegates so they could easily see the roster and make any changes that they needed to see um i'm the cor delegate because john Arico is our cor and he's a cor to a lot of units right now and since the cor can only can, usually is the only person other than a delegate to approve the adult applications. Obviously, I'm a COR delegate, so I can also approve the adult applications that come through. Um, so you may wanna make another uh, trusted leader, a COR delegate um, to help um, approve those adult applications online. Um, and then we have our advancement chair here and all that, but see where it says add, you can actually, if you're one of the key three or the delegate, you can um, add positions where needed. And then um, they have a reports section as well. Um, so you could actually download um, a counselor merit badge listing. I know that's been a question from quite a few of our leaders is, you know, um, who, are, who are our merit badge counselors? If you go into reports, you can run that report here. You just click run and it comes up in like an Excel spreadsheet. Um, Eagle extension report, um, you can look into um, some uh, what our Explorer posts are. Um, and, you know, the list goes on. You can run, you know, you can run any of these reports here that you may find helpful. Um, you could run a non-renewed membership report. And you could see um, who dropped their membership um, within a speci specified date. So if you wanted to send out a special email to invite back your scouts and adults to maybe a little troop reunion or a pack reunion, or you do a little cookout. And then, you know, maybe you have a little schedule of your events coming up and invite them back. Maybe they'll rejoin your unit, especially with COVID. A lot of families, you know, dropped out during COVID for health reasons. And also because maybe the group just wasn't meeting and maybe they haven't realized that everyone's back up and running and that people are meeting. 
So um, you may want to run that report and, and contact those folks and say, hey, you know, we're back up and running. These are activities coming up, come and join us. Um, and then, um, yeah, they have the unit pin report. Um, and then, yeah, then you can run the data that it, that is um, showing with your unit pin as well. So um, that is everything um, within our my dot scouting unit pin menus. Is there anything, any questions or anything that I didn't go through or if I went through too fast, let me know. Thank you. I actually just updated mine. Oh, yay, I love hearing that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad. I, I hope it was helpful. I hope I didn't go too quick. I didn't realize a lot of these reports were available. So it's very, very helpful. Oh, great. I'm glad. Yeah, and if you do have, you know, dropped youth is that... There... I'm sorry, I cut someone off, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, is there, you know, maybe in the fall plans to maybe do a Zoom thing on Scout Book? Um, I, I just feel like we, we had that tool kind of deployed out, but never really um or maybe they've in you know added features and stuff but i don't i don't really think as you know leaders we really utilize it correctly or fully or understand all the functions that we can do because i you know i i figured out the other day you know about a month ago that oh you could actually go in and see all the merit badge counselors that are in the area and if they're busy or not busy and stuff like that. Yeah. I just think it has a lot of potential that we just have never, you know, really embraced. And yeah, no, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, actually, um, Josh is putting together a team of experts with Scoutbook and uh, Internet Advancement, and they're going to be doing um, an online Zoom training uh, for Internet Advancement and Scoutbook for our leaders. So yeah, that'll be really helpful. So um, internet, internet advancement, um, I, I'm not sure if everyone knows, but internet adv advancement is when you use like a third party and then you upload those advancements to um, like Troopmaster or something other than Scoutbook. I know we still use Troopmaster. Um, and then the Scoutbook is what um, a lot of our units use to track um, advancement. And it's different than internet advancement, obviously. So they're going to do the two different trainings for, for folks that utilize both of those because um, I believe we are doing away with the paper advancements. So everyone will have to learn how to do it online. <laughs> you, you're going to stop enabling people? <laughs> oh they God. are just a resource you know we want to be a resource what? but when there's you know as you guys know when there's better more efficient tools out there you know we get paper advancements and sometimes a month or so goes by before those could be entered right because depending on what's happening at the office and who's receiving them or by the time we get them so it really is a benefit for units to really start utilizing the internet advancement tools because it's pretty much instantaneous and it's not putting off those advancements for the kids. I mean, you guys know, especially the little kids, they love getting the belt loops. They love getting their, their badges and, and the pins and everything that they get. Um, so this really is to not delay the kids from earning what they have earned in a timely manner. You wanna really get those advancements to them, you know, at least once a month, right? You know, as they're learning for that month, you know, they want to see the. They want to reap the the rewards. So um, it it is just a more efficient process, and um, and it's and it's our kids deserve that. They deserve to be rewarded uh, in a timely manner for their hard work. So and it does get delayed uh, two years when the pandemic was just kicking off. We had a whole um, slew of AOLs bridge over to three different troops. 
and all of a sudden I'm getting calls from cows and say, hey, I got so-and-so getting all these advancements and I haven't seen this kid in six months because it's six months already in a troop and yeah. they didn't have any paperwork on them uh, being even registered, even yeah. though the application was sitting right there. Because uh, oh they gosh. did the online version, uh, then they did the online version at the troop level, so they're able to track them. But it is delayed the uh, paper. By quite yeah, a I was calling up units at one point and um, said, "Oh, we don't have you know an application for this scout that earned all these advancements." And they're like, "Oh, well, they're no longer with our with our unit." You know, and they were you know they had earned all these advancements, so. Um, so hopefully the internet, you know, hopefully doing it digitally will really help with retaining a lot of our scouts too, I think. And you'll know before the, if you're doing it online and they're filling out the application, it pops up within 72 hours in the scout book. You know, so you'll know it's there. So if it's not there, then you can start questioning, hey, what did I do wrong? Or did something go and put in a ticket and find out? So at least you'll know within the 72 hours if you did something wrong or it didn't go in properly. So right, that's true. In that. Yeah, it's kind of like your own little fact checking. Um, was that helpful for you guys? Did you feel like you were a little bit more familiar with uh, my dot scouting for those of you that may not have been as familiar and oh yes. good, I see head shaking, awesome. I never know, I always feel like I talk really fast. So don't be afraid to tell me to slow down because I, I get excited and I talk really fast. So <laughs> I go through things pretty quickly. Um, I um, am about to stop the recording, but for those of you that wanna hang on for two more minutes to just briefly go over the um, membership committee. I know we ran later than usual, but I think we shared a lot of valuable information with each other, which I really appreciate. I appreciate all of you interacting and sharing what what has worked and what maybe some of the challenges were um, but hang on as I stop this recording but thank you all for joining us and um, we will see you uh, the last Thursday in May our next workshop is um, and we talked about it tonight is um, planning your year's worth of um, activities planning your year ahead of time in June and what that looks like and we'll give you some resources and and um, how to really plan out that year in scouting ahead of time and summer fun activities and how to make those into recruiting activities, of course. So we'll see you um, the last Thursday of May.